I would say that you need to learn to be the last to speak. I see it in boardrooms every day of the week. Even people who consider themselves good leaders, who may actually be decent leaders, will walk into a room and say, here's the problem, here's what I think, but I'm interested in your opinion, let's go around the room. It's too late. The skill to hold your opinions to yourself until everyone has spoken does two things. One, it gives everybody else the feeling that they have been heard. It gives everyone else the ability to feel that they have contributed. And two, you get the benefit of hearing what everybody else has to think before you render your opinion. To keep your opinions to yourself. If you agree with somebody, don't nod yes. If you disagree with somebody, don't nod no. Simply sit there, take it all in, and the only thing you're allowed to do is ask questions so that you can understand what they mean and why they have the opinion that they have. You must understand from where they are speaking, why they have the opinion they have, not just what they are saying. And at the end, you will get your turn. Practice being the last to speak. That's what Nelson Mandela did. Number five. My favorite one of all, a true story. There was a former Under Secretary of Defense who was invited to give a speech at a large conference of about a thousand people. And he was standing on the stage with his cup of coffee, his styrofoam cup. And he took a sip of his coffee and he smiled and he looked down at the coffee. And then he went off script. And he said, you know, last year I spoke at this exact same conference. Last year, I was still the undersecretary. And when I spoke here last year, they flew me here business class. And when I arrived at the airport, there was somebody waiting for me to take me to my hotel. And they took me to my hotel, and they had already checked me in, and they just took me up to my room. And the next morning, I came downstairs, and there was someone waiting in the lobby to greet me, and they drove me to this here same venue and handed me a coffee, cup of coffee in a beautiful ceramic cup. He says, I'm no longer the undersecretary. I flew here coach. I took a taxi to my hotel and I checked myself in. When I came down the lobby this morning, I took another taxi to this venue. And when I asked someone, do you have any coffee? He pointed to the coffee machine in the corner and I poured myself a cup of coffee into this here styrofoam cup. He says, the lesson is, the ceramic cup was never meant for me was meant for the position I held. I deserve a styrofoam cup. Remember this. As you gain fame, as you gain fortune, as you gain position and seniority, people will treat you better. They will hold doors open for you. They will get you a cup of tea and coffee without you even asking. None of that stuff is meant for you. That stuff is meant for the position you hold. It is meant for the level that you have achieved of leader, or success, or whatever you want to call it, but you will always deserve a styrofoam cup. Remember that lesson of humility and gratitude. You can accept all the free stuff. You can accept all the perks. Absolutely, you can enjoy them, but just be grateful for them and know that they're not for you.